basic concepts of DBMS and RDBMS. DBMS, as the name suggests, stands for Database Management Systems. It's a way in which an organization manages its database. A bank has a lot of financial data and the way in which it organizes or manages the database is different as to compare to a company which is into video production. Because in one case, the data is two-dimensional and in the other case, the data is in the higher dimensions. Firstly, what is a DBMS? Why do I need DBMS in the first place? Okay, so DBMS is a software which is used for storage, access and manipulation of the data. So, so think there are three rules in which a database needs to operate. Okay, it has to be efficient on three levels. It has to be great storage. It has to be great with access. It has to be great with manipulation because a data goes through three different maturity stages. Okay. It should also ensure that there is data integrity in the place and there is data security in the place because these days, if you see data security, data leakage is a big issue and every organization, especially if you're, if you are uh, storing sensitive customer information, it's a big thing. You have to be very prudent when it comes to data security. You have to enforce the rules for data validation when it comes to engineering a particular database. Also, you have to make sure that you can have efficient policies for restoring the data, for backup the data, for recovering the data in case of calamities. Every database has some key features and every database has to add adhere to those key features. Firstly, it's data abstraction and independence. What is data abstraction and independence? It is nothing but a database creates an abstraction layer between an application and the database such that the retrieval of the data becomes very easy. Management of the data becomes very easy. The second part is data security. Again, coming to the same example, for example, if you are managing sensitive customer, inf customer information, for example, retina scan, thumbprints, you have to make sure the data security in your databases is top notch. Second is data consistency. In whichever way the data gets stored, okay, once it gets matured, that the data gets indexed in a proper manner, it has to be consistent. It cannot break its rows and columns format and go into some other format. So in a way in which my data gets stored on a database, at the time of the retrieval, at the time of manipulation, my data has to be in the same consistent manner. Okay, so that my engineering team is at peace. Concurrent access and recovery. What is concurrent access? For example, let's say I have a single database, but my engineering team is that of 500 people. At the same time, my engineering team is working on 10 different databases. So 10 different databases might suffer the load. Okay. So it should be top notch when it comes to concurrent access. What does concurrent access mean? For example, let's say you're a bank and you have credit card transaction database, debit card transaction database, foreign customers database, any FT transactions database, account details database, so on and so forth. At a single time, let's say 400 people are accessing your database, there shouldn't be any lag when it comes to storage of data, when it comes to retrieval of the data, and everything just should seem seamless. What is recovery? Recovery is nothing but, for example, if I lose the data uh, due to some inefficiencies, I should be able to retrieve it back faster. Reduced application development time. Let's say you are working on a particular project and due to for which you need to access the database. At that point of time, the turnaround time has to be much smaller, okay, in when it comes to application development. Then you have backup and recovery. Many a times due to natural calamities, due to some mishappenings, there are chances that you might lose up on the data. These days we hear a lot that the credit card details, thumbprints got leaked, account details got leaked. Um, for example, sensitive information got leaked. So how do you back up the data? How do you recover the data efficiently, faster, making sure there is no data leakage? That is one of the key features of a database management system. There is one more part to backup, which is called as a snapshot. 
So backup happens after a particular period of time, let's say after 60 minutes, after 120 minutes, after four hours, so on and so forth. When it comes to snapshot, snapshot is dynamic. So you can actually know what was the data that was stored or retrieved five minutes back. Yes. Then you have data sharing. Data sharing is easy to understand. It is nothing but let's say I am working with a team. Okay. Let's say I am operating from continent A and I have a teammate who is sitting in continent B and I have to share the data with her. I should be able to share the data with the employee or my teammate sitting in continent B with efficiency. And that is one of the key features of database management. And that is the reason I need a database management such that my data doesn't go haywire and it is stored centrally. What are some of the applications of DBMS? So database management system is used extensively when it comes to real-time data, stock market, education, banking, transport, human resource management, marketing, advertising, television. Wherever you see data being generated in the real time, which is either dynamic or static in nature, Dynamic means live data, the data gets generated every second and static data is basically a data which gets generated over a period of time or after a period of time or after a certain lag, that's static data. So this is where all application of, you can see application of database management system. E-commerce is one of the best examples I can have on top of my mind when it comes to dynamic data. But what is the advantage of having a database management system? What is, a, what is the advantage of having a central repository of all the data that is being generated? Firstly, it standardizes the entire process. It's like one-stop shop where I can ha have access to all the data, whether it's finance data, admin data, sales data, marketing data, so on and so forth. It optimizes the needs of application. For example, let's say again, you are developing some applications in-house okay um, it makes it very efficient to retrieve the data for the application development purpose okay what happens in dbms is not every single employee in the organization has access to the data or the database you have to assign certain roles there are database owners and there are table owners who are who are the people who take care of that database okay they make sure that the data is stored efficiently accessed efficiently retrieved efficiently, recovered efficiently, so on and so forth. So it's like having a central repository, but with security in the place. Yes. The best part about it is that it can be easily maintained. Yes. Let's say you have seven offices across the globe. At one central region, you can efficiently manage a single database. Let us understand what is a relational database management system. It is a relational database management system. What is a relational data? A relational data is nothing but any data that has two dimensional format, rows and columns. Okay. Think of, think of it like having a normal Excel sheet. Okay. And putting your records on an Excel sheet. That's a relational data. Yes. So what is RDBMS? It is nothing but a software which is used to manage the relational databases yes something like a PostgreSQL something like a Microsoft SQL Server Studio that's an example of a relational database management system what happens with RDBMS is that it stores the data in a structured way okay what is a structured way it's nothing but I have a data coming in okay and that data gets efficiently stored in tables and columns or rows and columns format but which eventually becomes a table and the database consist of multiple such tables in a database okay and every single table has something called as a primary key has something called as a foreign key what's a primary key primary key is nothing but a unique identifier that i have to a table okay for example i am an employee working in an organization what is my primary key my primary key is employee id because that is unique to me right again when it comes to rdbms tools and features for creating updating querying relational databases, which are also called as CRUD operations. Yes. Let us understand what are some of the key features when it comes to RDBMS. One of the biggest key feature of RDBMS, which is unparalleled, is its ability to store the data in tables for efficient retrieval. Okay. Then that data which is stored in the table gets converted into rows and column format. Okay, so obviously when you have data in rows and column format, 
you don't have to be a scientist to read the data it becomes very easy to understand the data to make sense of the data to gain insights from that data yes but how do i do that efficient retrieval for that i do something called as indexing okay when we create indexing over the data what's an what's an index index is nothing but i give number to every single row okay it's simple as that giving a number to every single row makes it efficient to retrieve the data store the data access the data so on and so forth sharing a common column in two or more tables okay for example let's say i have three tables employee table salary table and management table when i have keys in place a primary key and a foreign key what i can do is that i can actually structure the relations between these three tables it's like you are interviewing all the tables inside the database such that it becomes a centralized structure it provides multi-user accessibility as i've already said you have thousand employees working in the organization if i have to give access to thousand people to a database it might harm the data security but what i can do is that i can create some efficient database owners stable owners and then they can give access to those people especially people from engineering teams so on and so forth where is rdbm uh, extensively used you name it it's used in it's, it's used for customer data it's used for product data it's used for sales data it's used for inventory data it's used for financial transactions so on and so forth again it's a very good central repository to store static data and dynamic data what are some of the advantages firstly it provides a robust security okay as i've said data security is a very big feature uh, across the globe people are facing threats when it comes to data security and hence when i have robust security in place that is one of the biggest advantages that i have when it comes to idbms okay it provides data independence by separating the physical data storage from the logical data separation this so i don't have to physically store the data everything is on cloud okay again it's a robust way it's a reliable way i can easily manipulate the data when when i have structured data already in place i'm already 80 percent there it's just the 20 percent of the work that i need to do when it comes to manipulation of the data thank you